Hello viewers, SuperGT here. You may have seen the recent FIA race I did in the manufacturers for the new season. This is the Nations Cup, so the first round of the new season, and we kick it off with probably my favourite combination in the game, Group 3 at the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. I therefore have no excuses, I should dominate this and set world records. We all know that's not going to happen. But this was my first race and the annoying thing was my sportsmanship rating was below 90 out of 99. So we didn't get matched up with the highest rated players, although there are two very, very fast players in front of us. The two in front, um, very, very quick. And you can see that here. I punted off Dilster at turn one. By the end of lap one, they were gone. And then into the pit lane at the end of lap seven for our pit stop, one pit stop for this race. So we got that done, came out ahead of this guy who was actually shadowing us for the majority of the race. Lap 10, he went up the inside and uh, completed the move. And I managed to stick with him for a good couple of laps. Um, so this point here by lap 12, he was driving the Mercedes, he went with the Porsche, and I think the Mercedes was the very common choice. And just coming out of the hairpin at the bottom of the hill, just getting on the power a little bit too soon. And that dropped me down well outside of the slipstream range, eventually finishing in fourth place. So not the greatest result. The winning car was the Porsche, so it perhaps shows you that it can't be done in that car. So I don't really have an excuse. I can't blame the I can't blame the car because the 911 actually won the race. So that was how the first race went. But I wanted to um, to, to wait until a proper race. And by proper, I mean with the big boys with full sportsmanship rating, which we are doing here. And we have none other than world finalists, uh, Manu Rodri, uh, Tijani up there as well. We've, e we've even got Wi Fi password in here for the lols as well. So good times were had for this one. Still in the Porsche, the most common choice being the Mercedes AMG. I'll say about half the pack or more going for that Mercedes. I think I was the only Porsche in this one. But this is here, my qualifying lap. And my final one at that, as we come up into the final corner. And thankfully we've got actually a tow here from the Audi R8 up ahead. Coming through the final turn, we're gonna come across the line. Currently 15th, we jump up to 10th, less than a second away from pole position. And you see the horde of AMGs, which we're gonna to try to beat and uh, we get displaced down to 11th place uh, by one other person. So Tijani doing well to, to be a combo breaker up there in third place. And there are the results. So less than a second away from pole position. And this is what I really like about FIA, the fact that it's so close and very, very competitive. And of, of course, another very, very big change that they've made is the, the timings for the races. So they're actually quite late into the night now. They're more spread out. It's like an hour and 20 between each race between nations and manufacturers and of course the race is longer so we can expect races to last about half an hour these days so it is quite a lengthy process now the main problem i had here was starting in 11th it just so happened that i started in an awkward position you see immediately i'm 1.5 seconds away from the group ahead which is just really really frustrating and sometimes this happens you can you can get really unlucky with the exact position that you start because sometimes you just drop off because you're on an awkward chicane or something. This happens a lot around Catalonia, Suzuka, uh, where, you, where the final corners are chicanes or the, there's chicanes near the end of the lap and you can start right on them and it can get quite awkward. So that, that didn't help. That wasn't um, a positive start. But as we said, the race is long, 15 laps around the Nürburgring and the lap times around here are just under two minutes and then you add, a, you add in the pit stops. You're looking at a total race time of around about 29 to 30 minutes in total length. If you're fully on it, that is. I mean, if you're spinning out every four seconds, then it might take a bit longer. Down into the hairpin at the bottom of the hill, you see the gap there, 1.6 seconds, and frustratingly, all the guys ahead are slipstreaming each other. So these are quick guys, and I'm trying to, you know, race against them. I'm trying to catch up to them um, when they've all got slipstream on each other. And I made a mistake through here, and that was crucial, I think. That was a crucial mistake because I was just getting into that slipstream range. And then I absolutely bottled it at the exact wrong moment when I could have just hung in there on that slipstream. 
and now instead I've been overtaken. I'm in this guy's slipstream at least, but he's not in anyone else's slipstream, so it's not really helping. He goes, he goes defensive, which is actually really frustrating because at this point of the race, we're just trying to minimise time loss. So I'm not really sure why he wanted to defend so early, just go or don't go. Just let me pass or stay ahead and just take the normal racing line. Because the more we defend, the more we're losing time to everyone else. And uh, just managed to get him back actually, straight away. So we can just go go about our business and just try to catch back up with that pack. So that was, so two things that have gone wrong so far. One, the start wasn't in an ideal position and just couldn't latch onto the back of the cars ahead. And then two, as soon as I did get back into that slipstream range, I immediately make a mistake. So at least I know what I'm doing wrong. That is something to uh, to be ready to to do. You know, be be ready to accept that you've made mistakes and learn from them in the future. So I know that I've made a mistake. You know, just don't do that again, basically. At least learn from what you've done wrong and hopefully in the better. Uh, hopefully in the future you get better uh, at judging those kinds of things. So still in 11th is where we started. We've got the, the Portuguese guys still in tow in the Mercedes. I do feel as though I'm quicker than this group ahead, but uh, again, I still need to put the groundwork in to get back into that slipstream range, which is of course around about 1.2 seconds. So quite quickly we can talk about the, the new format as we skip ahead to lap uh, number four. So this new format, longer races, it does uh, open up or offer improved range of uh, strategies as we're going to find out during the course of this race my strategy here was to go for a two stop be aggressive on fuel and go for two stops and we're going to follow Tijani into that strategy as he comes into the pit lane just ahead of us so you see him just in front there and we did actually catch up with that very big group so the strategy here normally well in my first race basically I short shifted so that I didn't have to put in any fuel at all during the race you can do this whole race without refueling, but you will ideally need to at least uh, change the tyres. I've just come out ahead of Wi-Fi password, so that is kind of useful. And I can just uh, d uh, duck into the slipstream of Tijani now. So that's quite useful. That's, that's actually turned out quite well for us. So two bits of bad luck earlier on, but this has actually turned out quite well now. So the strategy now, instead of uh, fuel saving and going for a one-stop, it's be aggressive rev the car out in every gear so maximize the speed of the car down all the straights and then on the second pit stop we can just refuel a slight amount to recover that lost fuel which will take a little bit longer but then hopefully you gain the time back by being more aggressive and driving on the limit and to be fair and to be fair i prefer to drive on the limit sometimes it is quite a tricky skill and it is definitely a skill to drive the car as quickly as possible without um burning too much fuel and without uh, using the tires so that's something we've got, uh, got to definitely work upon. As we come up into the Schumacher rest, it looks as though we're stuck up behind a Supra whose tyres seem to be dying of death. The death process has, has begun, presumably, for those fronts on that car. As we look around the outside of Tijani, we're not really looking for that move. We're just going to try to sort of get a better viewpoint of the corner. We'll take a little bit of grass onto the exit. Onto the back straight. So we're going to look for a move here, possibly, is Tijani going to go for it as he goes to the left, maybe, no, not quite. As we come into the braking point, I lift off early, and I go onto the brakes, and I just move to the right-hand side to avoid Tijani, uh, Tijani, and I completely spin out and bottle it. I do a Sebastian Vettel impression, and lose, I mean, I, got, I don't know how many seconds I've lost there, maybe six, seven, eight seconds just by spinning out, and... It really caught me out. I would say that really caught me out because I lifted off early. I thought I was fine. And I think Tijani actually braked earlier than I was expecting because the gap in front of him was actually quite big. So he left quite a lot of space. So it's quite a weird incident for sure. So that really caught me off guard. And unfortunately, we can add it to the list of things to go wrong in this race. I've gone down about seven or eight seconds further back than I would like, or than I really should be. Uh, we've come out just ahead here, or sorry, Wi-Fi password to come out just behind me, so I have some company at least. Uh, you know, you look, sometimes you get in these races, you spin out, and then you're on your own, and it's very boring. But at least we've got our good buddy Wi-Fi password to give us some company from here to the end of the race, or presumably just for for a few laps. And my next pit stop is going to be at the end of lap number nine. So end of lap four, end of lap nine, 
and then we're going to go to the end just grazing the gravel on the exit there you see i'm pushing really trying hard to get back onto the back of the group and sometimes that results in well mistakes if you saw my ferrari race in the manufacturers you would have seen that was a very well judged race so we skip ahead a couple of laps here it's the end of lap nine or half of the lap nine so the ferrari race was really well judged in the sense that i didn't over push at any point i just kind of just did what I needed to do and it worked. Here, uh, things, you know, they're not really all going my way at all. And this just happens, it's just a thing in motorsport. Things don't always go your way. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Not often because, or not always because you've done something wrong. It's just, you know, just that's just the way things are. Things go wrong sometimes. So this guy was coming through on fresh tires, so I let him go and I don't know what he was doing. He just didn't really give me too much space into the chicane, but didn't want to, get involved in too many incidents and sometimes it's best just to let people go who are quite aggressive he gave me a love tap through one of the corners i thought okay just go mate don't want to get involved in too many incidents so we've had we've had our big incident so far almost smashing into the back of tigney that would not have been good so although i say that it probably would have been better just to hit him and take the hit um i wouldn't have been so far back otherwise so there is our second pit stop down in 17th. Can we recover anything from here? It's very frustrating to, you know, to be this far, far down the order, 27 seconds away from the lead at this point. But I think it's always good practice. It's always good to just fight for everything that you can get, even if it is towards the back of the pack. And let's not forget that this is a fairly highly rated lobby. We've got some very, very quick players in here, world finalists and guys who I mean, even someone like Tisney, he's put it on pole during a world tour event. Uh, so this is the kind of caliber of the guy and, and the players in this lobby. So looking at that gap ahead, we're about four seconds away from that pack and we're on fresh tires. We're okay for fuel from here to the end. So there's still potential for positions to be gained and you have to be patient, especially in a race this long. Let's not forget the race is a lot longer than, than uh, before. The race is gonna be about half an hour long. So even here, 21 minutes into the race, we've still got nine minutes of racing still to go and plenty of things can change in nine minutes and uh, even by the 22nd minute so barely a minute and a half later in fact we've definitely caught up with these two guys ahead and you see the the gaps there as we pan out it's a Citroen in 13th who is the quicker of the two cars and the Supra of Hirakram who seems to be struggling that Toyota does not seem all that all that great it's kind of all at sea really in, in that car in this race and uh, he, he tends to be dropping back and as we go down into the hairpin, we're definitely gaining on this Supra. We're going to try to get past him as quickly as possible before that Citroen gets away too much. So that's the main plan here. Um, so again, with these strategies, people do go for different strategies, which is really good to see. I, I, I love these kind of races where people are doing one stop, some are doing two stops, some are being aggressive, some aren't, some are fuel saving. So it's a real mix of strategies going on. And it's always good to see that. And I think at this point, Herocram is obviously on some different strategy than I am because he's quite a lot slower and it's key really therefore to get past him as quickly as possible before you lose too much time if you if you start behind him for a whole lap you could lose two three seconds and then well against the top players in the world you're not going to gain the three seconds back because they're just that good so you have to be very very quick with how you do these things obviously you're not too quick you don't want to risk a penalty um, but coming up into turn one, it's going to be a very good overtaking opportunity. As I can see there, his traction was pretty bad as he came out onto the main straight. So as you come down the main straight, down into towards turn one, probably the best overtaking opportunity on the lap at Nürburgring GP. I'm going to pull out to the outside. I wasn't alongside, but it's going to be slightly later on the brakes. Hook it up with the apex. He goes slightly wide and I'm up the inside into 14th. So we've got that job done. I don't think we need to defend. His, it was clear that his car was quite slow. Uh, for that lap that I built up to catching up with him. So we can just kind of turn our attention to the Citroen ahead of us. And let's see if we can gain 13th place. So again, not great, not great that we're, that we're this far down the order, but it's always good just to try to fight for everything that you can get. It is very frustrating, very frustrating knowing that that mistake, that really stupid mistake, has uh, cost me five, six, seven seconds and I could easily be towards the top 10, fighting towards the top 10 place, which I would be very happy with. So coming up with the Schumacher S, 
The Porsche here, very well planted. I'm not sure how good this car is for this race. It obviously, it's quite good because the last guy won in the race. But um, most people going for the AMG, and often, if, if everyone's going for it, it probably is the best car. But it's not always going to be the case. So, 14th lap is almost complete. We are definitely just inside the slip ring range now. So there is potential here to catch up with the Citroen. And we have slowly reeled him in over the course of the last couple of laps. And there is definitely potential here for an overtake. He's still driving well. I don't think I have a significant tyre advantage over him or a fuel advantage. It's not like his tyres are dead and mine are fully alive. Uh, it, it seems as though we're actually fairly even on, on that respect. So, crossing the line with one lap to go. Is it possible to gain more position in the Porsche around the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit? I don't think we can gain any more than that. The guy in 12th does have a penalty as I misjudged the braking point there. And that is one thing you do have to judge differently. If you're in the slipstream range, your braking will be, or will have to be a lot earlier as you're going a little bit quicker in the slipstream. Now through turn three, braking nice and late, coming back for that late apex. You really do have to get all over that curb. I don't really do that, I kind of graze it. And then here you can really abuse the limits technically not as the game allows it and we make a big mistake and that is pretty much it over you see just how much I was pushing really trying to get that last position and then just lost control as the rear tires are fairly worn by this point sixth lap on these tires and it's not going to go down to the wire for 13th place it is going to be a 14th we're going to skip to the end of the race here so kind of a weird race that one I really enjoyed it but it was kind of excruciating knowing that I made that really silly mistake and lost quite a lot of time and then of course made that second mistake right towards the end of the race. I, I perhaps finished about 10 seconds further down in the race than I really should have done. So if we take away 10 seconds I would have been maybe fighting for about 10th or 9th that kind of position. But there we go, lessons learnt, uh, we've got to be more consistent, maybe do a practice race or two and then in the future we'll do a lot better in these races but that is it for today's video i do hope you enjoyed it and do let me know how you went in your nation's cup race and whether or not you like the new format change because for me that is really good that they've changed it to longer races but that's all for me thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time goodbye